What is up, party people? My name is Daryl. Today, I'll walk you through how to use the Google AI Studio. The Google AI Studio is a free and collection of AI tools that allows you to experiment with Google's Gemini AI models. Whether you're a total beginner or want to explore what's possible with AI, I'll show you how to get started today step by step. Now, at first glance, the Google AI Studio might look a bit overwhelming, but once you understand how to use it, the Google AI Studio can help you with pretty much anything. The AI Studio ranges with a variety of features like asking it basic questions or just giving it commands. Like what's the best way to cook salmon? Very similar to ChatGPT. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Let's say you're building a Shopify store, but you don't know how to change themes. The Google AI Studio can walk you through exactly how to do this in real time while screen sharing and telling you exactly what to click on. Here's an example. So I just downloaded Shopify. How do I change the theme? Okay, I understand. To change the theme in Shopify, First, click on Online Store in the left-hand menu, then click on Themes. You can then explore the available themes and choose the one you want to apply. Or let's say you're editing a video on Final Cut Pro and don't know how to add in transitions. The AI will instruct you how to do this and explain exactly what to click on. Here's an example. So I'm using Final Cut Pro, but how do I add titles on top of my clips? To add titles on top of your clips in Final Cut Pro, go to the Titles browser in the top left corner. Choose a title style and then drag it onto your timeline above the video clip where you want the text to appear. You can also use it as a background assistant and leave it on just to ask questions. And lastly, you can generate apps, websites, or just have fun with it. So let me show you how all this works, the features, and how to use this AI tool. So first, let's hop on over to the Google AI Studio. And just in case you can't find this website, I'll leave a link below. You can also just type in Google AI Studio and click on the first link, and this will bring you to the AI Studio. Now at first glance, there's a lot going on here. So first, let me explain the features of the AI Studio. Now there are four main features of the Google AI Studio. Chat, Stream, Generate Media, and Build. The first feature is Chat. The Chat feature in Google AI Studio allows you to interact with AI models in a more conversational way. You can give it prompts or questions and it will generate responses. This is basically Google's version of ChatGPT. It's a great way to test out the Gemini AI. Next, we have Stream Real Time. This is one of the best things I've ever seen created with AI. The Stream Real-Time feature in Google AI Studio lets you see the AI's response being generated in real time, instead of waiting for the whole response being finished. You can use it to make stories, scripts, tutorials, or even use it to help you with what's on your screen. You can use the screen recording feature to ask for help for whatever is on your screen or even your webcam. This includes help with website builders, video editing programs, or even other AI tools. Next, we have Generate Media. The Generate Media feature allows you to create different kinds of media, like images or videos, using text prompts. You can describe what you want to see, and the AI will generate the corresponding media. It's a creative tool for generating visuals based on your descriptions. Lastly, we have Build. The Build app with Gemini feature allows you to create applications using the Gemini AI model. You can design various tools and applications that leverage Gemini's capabilities, such as building chatbots or creating websites. It provides a platform to integrate AI tools into your own project and ideas. So let's take a look. First, we have the basic chat prompt. This is very similar to ChatGPT. Here you can ask the AI something or instruct it to do something. For example, how do I cook frozen salmon? Then you'll see it generates a response. Or, hey, I want to create an ebook. Give me 20 ideas and help me create them. Now the chat prompt is very similar to ChatGPT, so you can just give it basic commands. So for example, how do I cook frozen salmon? Then I'll go ahead and run the prompt. And then voila, you'll see the Gemini AI just, you know, instructed us on how to cook frozen salmon. Now we can use this in other various ways. So here's another example. Give me 10 clickbait titles for how to make money online for my YouTube video. Here I'll run the prompt. And then here we go. We have 10 clickbait titles for how to make money online for YouTube videos. So you can just give it a basic prompt and then it'll generate whatever you ask it for. Also here under the plus icon, here you can upload specific files. Typically you would upload files if you want it to summarize a picture or if you want to understand what's going on in an image. You can also record audio and just give it instructions if you wanna go that route. You can also upload a YouTube video and ask the AI to summarize a YouTube video so you don't have to watch the entire thing. So there are various other ways where you can interact with the AI using media or audio. Now, another cool feature about this is that it can actually fetch linked information. So the first thing I wanna to do to turn this on is here on the right side, I'll turn on URL context, and then here I'll ask it a question. Now, over here, I created an article about how to find $50,000 web design clients, and I'm gonna take this link right here and copy it, and then I'm going to go over here and just ask it to summarize the article. All right, so can you please summarize this article? Here I pasted the link, and then I'll run the prompt. And then voila, you'll see that the AI summarized the article and just gave like the reader just like the gist of what my article was all about. 
So next, let me explain the options in the run settings just to give you a little bit more understanding of how to use this tool. You could choose from a variety of 2.5 Pro, 2.5 Flash, and a few others. The most modern and up-to-date version is 2.5 Pro. The temperature affects the creativity of the AI responses. The higher the temperature, the more creative the image will be. Next, we have media resolution. You can choose to have low or medium resolution. Next is thinking mode. This allows you to control how the model processes information. There's also set thinking budget, which sets the limits on the resources used. Under tools, you have a few more options. Structured output allows you to insert a little bit more code into your response. Grinding with Google search allows the AI to search Google to help give a better response based off the search results. The URL context feature allows you to insert URLs in order to get more information about a specific URL. The AI will then search the URL to get a better understanding of what's going on on that web page. Next, we have stop sequence. This is one or more specific streams of characters that when generated by the AI model will immediately terminate to the next generation. And lastly, we have the top P. This is a sampling parameter that controls the diversity and creativity of the Gemini's model. Let's jump to the next feature. The next is the Gemini Live. Now this allows you to interact with the Gemini Live in real time with talking, webcam, or even screen sharing. So first let's start with something basic. Let's just talk to the AI. So right here, I'll click on talk. Hey, what's up? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's on your mind? I need five ideas on how to market my coffee products. Do you have any ideas? Try hosting coffee tasting events to let people experience your products. Fourth, leverage social media with engaging content and targeted ads. And finally, consider offering subscription boxes for regular deliveries. Okay, that's it. End the stream. Then I'll go ahead and close the live stream. So here I'll disconnect. So you can ask the AI model for questions, for help, or if you just want someone to hang out with, you can just leave it on in the background and just have someone to talk to. I don't know. But let's focus on more of the innovative features. Let's talk about the webcam and the screen share. Now the webcam typically works better on mobile devices, so we'll skip that for now. And let's jump into screen share. So right here, I'll click on screen share. And here I'll select the window and click on share. Now this is probably one of the most powerful tools Gemini AI Studio. So if you need help with anything, the AI can help you with pretty much anything that you're working on. Let me give you some examples. Okay, so here we go. I'm building my show with Shopify. How do I change my logo? To change your logo in Shopify, you'll need to go to the theme section of your Shopify admin dashboard. From there, you can customize your theme to upload your new logo. Where is that? You should see the header section on the left-hand sidebar within the theme customization menu. Click on header to find the options for changing your logo. Oh, okay, I see it. Great. Once you click on logo, you should find an option to upload your new logo image. You can also adjust settings like the logo size and positioning there. Okay, so here I upload my logo? Yes, that's right. Once you've uploaded your logo, make sure to save the changes in your Shopify theme settings to make them live on your store. Awesome, thanks. Now let's try hosting her. Hey, I'm trying to build a new website. I purchased a hosting plan with Hostinger and I want to create a new website on my hosting plan. How do I do that? To create a new website with Hostinger, first log into your Hostinger account, then navigate to the website section and you should find an option to add a new website. Follow the prompts to set up your new site on your hosting plan. Okay, which one should I use? WordPress, Hostinger Horizons or the Hostinger Website Builder? It depends on your needs. WordPress is great for flexibility and a wide range of features, while the hosting your website builder is easier to use if you prefer a simple drag and drop interface. Hosting your horizons offers AI power tools, which can be helpful for quick setup. Awesome, all right, I'll use the hosting your website builder. Okay, lastly, I purchased a plan with OmniSend email marketing. I'm not too familiar with it, so how do I start a cam an email campaign? To start an email campaign with OmniSend, first log into your OmniSend account, then look for the campaign section in the dashboard. You should find an option to create a new campaign where you can set up your email content, select your audience and schedule it. Okay, here I'll click on email campaign. Now I have email settings. So what should I do here? What's all this about? In the email settings, you'll need to fill in the subject line, sender's name and sender's email address. These are important for recipients to identify your email. You can also add a pre-header text to give a preview of the content. Thank you so much. Now I do also want to show you the webcam, but personally I think using the phone is better because it's just going to give me like a copy of myself, right? So you can actually use this on mobile and ask it for questions using the webcam. So let me show you how to do that. Are these roasted pumpkin kernels organic? Here's the back. 
packaging doesn't specifically state that they are organic. It lists the ingredients as roasted pumpkin kernels and sea salt. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I found this currency in my backpack. What currency is this? That appears to be Thai bot. So pretty cool, right? Now here we have options on the right side. Let me quickly explain what these options mean. On the right side, we have several options. Run setting allows you to choose the model you're using, like Gemini 2.5 flash model. Below that, we have output formats. This lets you select whether you want audio, text, or both. Voice is where you can pick the voice you prefer. Currently, it's set to Zephyr. There's a variety of voices that you can choose from. Next is media resolution. This determines the quality of the media being used. Further down, we have turn coverage. This allows Gemini to adjust its response style. Effective dialogue enables Gemini to respond to the emotional tone of the conversation. Proactive audio lets Gemini take the initiative in the conversation. Session text helps it remember past interactions. Finally, we have tools. This gives you access to features like function calling and automatic function response to perform specific tasks. If you're not a developer, you might not need to worry about this. So next, let's jump to the next feature, generate media. Generate media is very self-explanatory. This allows you to generate media based off the prompts that you give it. Now, also on the right side, you have aspect ratio. This allows you to generate an image based off a specific ratio. Here we have the actual model running. We have image in four. You can actually only select one at the current moment. However, if you select 3.0, I believe you can make up to four images using this model. But let's go back over here to the up-to-date one, and then I'll give it a prompt. Now, I want to create a sword based off World of Warcraft, but I want to be very descriptive. So here I'm going to type in something real descriptive. So here's what I'm talking about. This is a very descriptive uh, prompt for the AI. A legendary sword glowing with ancient runes forged in the molten depths of Azeroth. Let's just see what it creates us. And voila, here we go. We have our sword of Azeroth. And here you'll see that we have this sword. We can, you know, say, yeah, it's good, no good. Here I can have a larger view of the actual sword. Okay. And then also we can download it onto our computer, we can copy it, or we can export it to Google Drive. So feel free to use the generate media here to create really high res images using the image and model. Now you can also use this to create full on videos. So right here we have VO, so click on VO. Now at the current time of making this video, only Google VO2 is available. So here on the right side under the Gemini model, we can only select VO2. It's only a matter of time before they add VO3 here. Google VO3 is Google's newest uh, video model. And I made a video on this and what it can make is like breathtaking. I mean, these things right here are all generated with AI. I have a full tutorial on the Google VO3 model. If you want to check that out, I'll leave that in the video description. Now, before we begin, on the right side, here you can select the number of results. You can also choose the aspect ratio. This is typically for long form content and 916 is the aspect ratio for YouTube shorts and maybe TikTok videos. Here we have the video duration, the frame rate, the resolution. And then lastly, we have the negative prompt. And this is essentially what you do not want to appear in the actual video. So this right here is an example of a very descriptive prompt. Now, just to give you the gist of this, I'm asking it to create a baby panda sitting next to a warm glowing table lamp. The rest of this is just very descriptive content, right? So once you actually enter in your prompt, you'll then click on run. All right, and here we go. So now we have two videos. So here's the first one, right? Go ahead and play this. It's just some panda right here, just, you know, play next to a lamp. Right, it looks cute, looks very good detail. It doesn't include audio. Uh, Google VO3 does include audio, but VO2 is currently limited to no audio, but you still get the video, right? And here is the other one. And, uh, it looks cute, looks like a panda playing next to a lamp. So that's basically how you can create really nice videos using the VO2 model. If you have any questions about prompt or anything else about like how to create really high def prompts, let me know in the video description. So let's go ahead and click on generate media. So next, let's talk about the last feature and click on build. So this is where you can build apps or websites using Gemini. So for example, create me a TOS generator website that allows users to create a TOS for their business. And then here, I'll go ahead and click on run prompt. And then voila. Now real quick, we can actually hide all this code right here by clicking on hide code editor. You can also uh, hide the code assistant and just get a, you know, a preview of what your website might look like. So this is the AI TOS generator, and this is where people can actually enter in their business details. And my website will generate a complete TOS for all these people. So here we go. I put in my company name, my app name, my website URL, 
my email and so on and so forth. So right here, I'll click on generate TOS. And then voila, we have a generated document where we have the agreement of terms, key definitions, changes to terms, and all this legal jargon. So the user can actually take this and just copy it and slap it onto their TOS. You know, they gotta make some changes. It lets them know where they have to insert their website name or their legal business name. And then right here, I'll copy the generated documents. And what's really cool is you can actually export all this onto a public URL or even a domain. So up here at the top, I'll click on deploy to cloud run. And then here we can actually select an app. So for example, I'll just select one of my apps here. And then check this out. This is my live URL. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it in the browser. And then voila, here's my website. How quick was that? So you can actually guide users to the TOS generator or any sort of app that you wanna develop. Now I'll be very honest with all of you. If you wanna deploy this on a custom domain, it can get a little complicated. And if you do wanna go that route, I actually do recommend to use Hostinger Horizons. I have a tutorial right here that I'll walk you through how to use Hostinger Horizons. It's essentially the same exact thing, but they've made it a lot easier to add it onto a custom domain. Now, to be honest, you can create some very complex websites with this. If you do want to learn more about how to create very complex websites using code, I will leave a tutorial in the description for you to check out later. Now, there are some things I would definitely critique about the AI Studio. The first thing is Google VO3 is not available in the AI Studio. I don't know why. I think maybe later they'll roll it out in the AI Studio. If you want access to the latest VO3 version, you'll need to go over to Google Flow, and that's where you can have access to Google Flow VO3 version. Another thing that I would critique is the build apps with Gemini. For some reason, they just make it very complicated to add in custom domains for your applications. Other services like Lovable, Hostinger Horizons, even like the 10 Web Builder, they allow you to create an app and then deploy it to a domain right away. I'm not sure why Google makes it a little bit more complicated, but um, you can do it, it's just not as easy. Now, one of the most innovative features about this was definitely the stream real time. This allows you to pretty much have the AI look at your screen and tell you exactly what to do. I love that feature. So next time I get like DaVinci Resolve or I get some sort of editor program, I can just ask the AI how to do everything and they'll instruct me in real time. All in all, I love AI and we're getting closer and closer maybe to like the beginning of the end, who knows? But uh, let me know what you think about the Google AI Studio in the video description. Also, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. My name is Daryl Wilson, and I will see all of you party people in the next video. Take care.